and welcome. My name is Erin Murphy and I'm a student at Penn State University. I would like to start my presentation by congratulating you on another outstanding year with Disney. Wall Street analysts were impressed with Disney's fourth quarter results, as you can see here, and the 22% profit increase from 2013 is quite an accomplishment. The recent blockbuster hits like Frozen, Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier, and Maleficent, just to name a few, were appealing to fans of all ages and show the commitment that Disney has to its public. Recently, however, ticket prices for the Disney resorts have been raised across the board, whether it's a Florida resident pass, a one-day pass, or even a multi-pass ticket. Magic Kingdom, Disney's most popular park, now has a triple-digit price tag, which represents a 6% increase in ticket prices over the past year. This does not include the cost of hotels, food, souvenirs, or even parking passes. The problem that most families face is that Disney World is too expensive for the average family to afford. A one-day pass at Magic Kingdom is $100 for anyone under the age of 9 and $105 for anyone 10 and older. A one-day pass at competing parks such as Universal is $91 for anyone under the age of 9 and $97 for anyone 10 and older. While most families purchase multi-day passes, the price increase still can be perceived as having a negative impact. In fact, since 2004, ticket prices have nearly doubled. At this current rate, it won't be long before tourists begin to boycott Disney and enjoy other less expensive attractions in Orlando, Florida, such as Legoland, Gatorland, Wet n Wild, Snowhill Mountain Bike Trail, or Lake Eola Park. In fact, tourists can ride the monorail for free and go and watch the fireworks at the Polynesian Resort Beach or the Transportation and Ticket Center. Now, this yearly increase might seem to be the real problem and could eventually become a huge problem for Disney in the future. But in my opinion, this is actually telling us something important that may turn out to be a great opportunity for Disney. I propose that Disney consider building more hotels and restaurants, add and update or reconfigure the current theme parks, or maybe even consider duplicating rides such as Space Mountain or Toy Story Mountain, which are extremely popular. One of the biggest problems that those fortunate enough to go to Disney World face is the wait time for rides. The typical wait time for most rides during the day is between 30 and 45 minutes. However, popular rides such as Toy Story Mania, Expedition Mountain, and Test Drive have wait times in excess of an hour and a half. One can just take a stroll down Main Street in Magic Kingdom and realize that most people who come to the parks are either children or families with children between the ages of 4 and 12 who need to be able to access the rides during the day. This is from about 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. This also happens to be when the lines for rides are the longest. Therefore, most people really only get to experience about five rides and maybe the afternoon parade during the day. I am sure that you have seen the sad, tearful faces of children as they wait and wait in lines. This is a major frustration for everyone. You also might counter this with the fact that you have addressed the problem of long wait times with the introduction of Disney's VIP tours, accommodation for disabled people, Fast Tra Pass, and most recently, My Magic Plus. For the average person, Disney's VIP tours, which cost between $310 and $380 per hour, are rather expensive. And while the modifications made for disabled people are admirable, it is also subject to abuse. Some guests are renting wheelchairs just to avoid the long lines, and are paying disabled tour guides to help them bypass those long lines. The post quoted one is saying, My daughter waited one minute to get on It's a Small World. The other kids had to wait two and a half hours. You can't do Disney without a tour concierge. This is how the 1% does Disney. Also, while My Magic Plus, the billion dollar multifunctional technology project that allows visitors to book ride times two months in advance and is sure to appeal to a vast majority of tech savvy individuals, I wonder if you've considered the possibility that once it is fully operational, guests might not have the opportunity to get onto their favorite rides. It is already difficult to get breakfast and dinner reservations with some of the characters. I have to believe that once it is fully operational, it will be hard to get some rides. Also, if a ride encounters mechanical difficulties on the day you booked your ride reservation, how will these passes be honored? These are questions I pose some thought. I propose that Disney consider building a duplicate Frozen ride and Toy Story Midway Mania ride in Magic Kingdom. I feel that having duplicate rides might be advantageous. The popularity of the Frozen movie has prompted Disney to consider opening a Frozen attraction, so I believe that this would be an ideal time to test the market and construct two Frozen rides in Magic Kingdom. Right now, the only Frozen activities are located in Hollywood Studios, but they can only be experienced with an additional outlay of cash. 
In addition, future plans for a frozen ride attraction will be located in Epcot. If you take a look at my hand-drawn floor plan of Magic Kingdom, I believe that a frozen ride should be added to the space behind the attraction It's a Small World and beside Belle's Enchanted Forest. It would be logical to add another ride to the new Fantasyland because that is where most of the other Disney Princess attractions are located. Turning back to this side of the floor plan, the Speedway Ride Experience, located right here, will be closing in June of 2015. Although part of this area is designated to improve the transportation system, I believe it would be wise to experiment with adding a duplicate Toy Story Midway Mania ride to that area. That ride is one of the most popular attractions in Disney, and I believe by expanding in this way, Disney would be able to meet the demand for its valuable product and increase its product without just relying on ticket price increases. This is a classic example of expanding supply to meet demand. I have also included on my PowerPoint the most recent map of Magic Kingdom to give you another visual of where I believe that we should place the new rides. This is where I believe the Frozen ride should be placed. And this is where I believe the Toy Story Midway Mania ride should be placed. If you look here, I've drawn on a sketch of what I believe a popular and family-oriented ride would look like. The outside of the ride would look like the wandering Oaken's trading post from the movie. The attraction goes through a quick timeline of the important events that happen in the Frozen movie. The visitors get onto a sled led by Sven and they meet Anna and Elsa as children. They build Olaf, and Anna is struck by Elsa's magic when they are playing late at night. Anna and Elsa's family rush to meet the trolls to get Anna cured. The next scene they see is Anna knocking on Elsa's door singing, Do You Want to Build a Snowman? Next, the visitors see images of Elsa and Anna on Coronation Day, and Anna falling in love with Prince Han. Elsa's powers are shown at the ball, and she runs away. Anna runs after her, and we meet Kristoff, they start their journey together to find Elsa's castle. Along the way, the riders meet Olaf, who says, Hi, I'm Olaf, and I like warm hugs. They finally reach Elsa's castle and find, it is, find her in her new attire. The riders tour through the castle, listening to Let It Go, and end with a mural pictured above the ride floor plan, which you can see right here. Now, I am sure you are all wondering how much this project will cost. We know that the most time for any new attraction is spent in the design phase. For example, Big Thunder Mountain took two, 10 years of planning and 18 months of construction to complete. But since the design for Toy Story Midway Mania and the software glitches have already been worked out, the time would be eliminated. Cost estimates from the original Toy Story Midway Mania attraction were about $80 million to design, construct, and build, and about three years from start to finish. Taking into account the time and expense to dismantle the current Speedway ride and plan and construct the new ride, I believe the cost and time commitment would be approximately the same as the original. If the demand is not met, then the area could easily be converted into another attraction. This is a timeline of what I believe what a frozen attraction would follow and when it would be introduced and when it would finally be finished. I believe it would start in 2015 and end in mid-2017. Attendance at theme parks in the United States has increased steadily over the past few years and experts project this trend will continue as the economy recovers and Disney adds new attractions. If the only response to this dilemma is to raise ticket prices, then Disney will eventually price itself out of the market and may encourage a competitor like Universal to expand and capture the opportunity. So how can Disney capitalize on this new trend? They can build more hotels and restaurants for guests and expand the existing parks, making Disney even more attractive to tourists. According to USA Today, the average hotel room is roughly 325 square feet, with room dimensions of approximately 13 feet by 25 feet, including a full bathroom. In the United States, the average hotel will have 
115 rooms and require around 48,000 square feet. In Central Florida, it would cost approximately $22.2 million to complete. This process takes a long time and considerable planning, so in order to be mo the most beneficial to all, it needs to be started as soon as possible. It is imperative that Disney be proactive now. However, if Disney only raises ticket prices in response to the popularity of a Disney World vacation experience, then it is possible that Disney World might not be able to maintain the high quality of entertainment that is a large part of its identity. Eventually, the parks and hotels would become too expensive for people to visit, so Disney's income will decrease. This loss of income will cause Disney World to stop running some rides, lay off cast members, cut park operational times, and force them to stop adding new attractions. It is essential that you keep Walt Disney's vision alive. When he purchased the Florida property, he called it the community of tomorrow and said, the community of tomorrow will never be completed. It will always be introducing and testing and demonstrating new materials and new systems. To paraphrase a line from the movie Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. Thank you, and I hope you take my proposal into consideration.